Well, the FDA has approved another Alzheimer's drug that can modestly slow the disease, providing a new option for patients in the early stages of the incurable memory-destroying ailment. The FDA approved Eli Lilly's Kisunla. It's only the second drug that's been convincingly shown to delay cognitive decline in patients following last year's approval of a similar drug from Japanese drug maker Isai. Brenda Shuttlesworth, the executive director of Alzheimer's Association, joins me now. Brenda, thanks for being here. So first off, how big of a victory is this FDA approval for the Alzheimer's Association? Well, every time a new drug is approved by the FDA, we shout for joy at the Alzheimer's Association. And of course, this is the third FDA approved drug in three years. So we are very excited with this, with this decision that came out on July 2nd. And it doesn't happen very often at all. So it's for those for those the first thing anyone on anyone's mind rather is for those who have a loved one dealing with alzheimer's is are they a good candidate for the drug and who would best be served by kisunla of course the first thing that we as the alzheimer's association say is you need to consult with your physician and make that decision as a family in consultation with your physician but people that are in the early stages of the disease and have amyloid plaques would be the best candidates for this disease so a diagnosis for a person might be mild cognitive impairment or they might have heard a diagnosis that says that they're in the mild stages of Alzheimer's disease. And again, they have the amyloid plaques. I see, and so how is Kisunla different from other Alzheimer's medications that have come out in the past? Right, it's in the same cat category as Adjahelm and Lakembi that came out uh, over the last couple of years. But this one is a bit different because again, it, it clears the plaques in the brain, but part of the tracking with this drug with your physician is that when the plaques are reduced to a certain level, this medication that is infused, it can be stopped. Right, so it's a different way of kind of treating Alzheimer's before it actually kind of gets going, right? Correct, and because of its efficacy, when the plaques are reduced to a certain level, patients no longer have to take the medication. And as far as the trials go, how good has the success, success rate been? The success rate has been the best yet. So it is reducing cognitive decline by 22% compared to placebo. And then it has a 39% rate of people not progressing to a moderate stage of the disease. That's big progress. Yes. As far as how the drug is administered, how is that happening and how often? Right, it's an IV infusion. Routinely, it's, it's monthly. And again, the dosing is going to be determined between a patient and their physician. And are there any side effects? There are side effects, and of course, we are battling a, a disease that has no survivors. And so it has side effects that need to be discussed based on what other symptomology a person may have and then a, a physician and the family will need to determine if it's the best the most common side effect that people hear about or the micro brain bleeds okay so it would still be worth it for a try at this treatment and what is the cost for this the cost is thirty two thousand dollars per year okay but if you're you're having a loved one suffering from alzheimer's it may be worth it I think that it's always worth it to talk with your physician. Of course, we at the Alzheimer's Association, we will continue to fight for affordable and accessible treatments until everyone has access to affordable, uh, affordable treatments and that we no longer have this disease. That's what we're hoping for. All right. That is our hope. Thanks so much, Brenda, for Thanks joining Thanks for us the today. invitation. Thank you.